Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Miles for Podcast. The hits just keep on coming. We have another very special guest with us today. You guys may know him in the haunt community as Slider X. This is one of the originators. He was there for Shipwrecked before it was even Queen Mary Dark Harbor. He was there for the transition to Dark Harbor. He's been part of some amazing stuff. And you know what? Without uh, further ado, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open the floor to you, my friend, because uh, I know you got a long history at the Queen. Uh, so start it from the top, man. Uh, you have a long, extensive career in the in the haunt industry. What was it for you that like got you into this stuff? Like, what was it that like drew your attention to this world? Um, when I was about 14, maybe 15, I went to Halloween Haunt. And, you know, alone from just seeing the, the back before they were scare actors, we called them monsters. Yeah. You know, but back just seeing the monsters was like, oh, my God, this is so cool that people actually get to do this. Right. You know what I mean? So um, that was cool. And then once we saw the sliders, it was just it was over. It was like, no, that's it. Like, I was already heavily into breakdancing and I played hockey and stuff like that. So I, I felt like it kind of fit right in. Oh yeah, and um, yeah. From there, it was just it was no it was no stopping us from there. So we actually slid for for three years in high school just to like scare kids at school. Yeah, and then um, we tried to get a, a job at Knotts when we were eighteen, and um, 
they had already finished casting for their their haunt monsters and they were just casting like blackout positions what we call the queen mary we call them attendants right we thought well we, we'll take the job and then my grandma my grandma called us and said hey the the queen mary is hiring monsters it says in like the newspaper you know <laughs> and so we we're like the queen mary like we they, we didn't even know they had anything so we thought let's go let's go down and check it out so what we did different from there from when we went to knots is we went to queen mary dressed in full costume oh nice yeah so we we're like we're, we're getting hired like, <laughs> you know and they they hired us on the spot and uh, myself and two friends of mine, like I said, we were already kind of renegade sliding and they didn't have sliders at the time. So we were like the first three sliders at the Queen Mary, essentially, you wow. know, my buddies didn't necessarily stick it out all the years, but I kind of, I ended up going for 16 years. Man, uh, talk about, you know, you, and you talked about obviously a lot of people in, in the industry that have been a part of it, that have been fans of it. The one place I hear more than anywhere, if you're in SoCal, that start is not scary for him. That's the first haunt you go mm -hmm. to. That's the one that mm -hmm. really like drives you into it. That's the one mm -hmm. that started it all, you know? So to see that the influence that you got over at not scary farm, seeing these guys doing it and your friends wanting to do this and then you guys taking it to a whole new level of kind of doing it your guys' way and then taking it over to the queen and starting a whole new legacy over there, man. I mean, how was that? Did you guys even know at the time that like this might be a big deal further down the the line when when it comes like later on, especially the return of Dark Harbor today? You know what I mean? I I don't know. I don't know. I think we were just kind of living in the moment, right? You know. But I I remember specifically like like at one point saying one day like when it was just like a couple of us and it was still in the beginning stages of the Queen Mary. I remember standing there saying one day there's gonna be sliders like running all over here you yeah. know what i mean so so i think i knew that that once we got a hold of them they weren't going to get rid of sliding like the right. sliding was just going to grow bigger and bigger you know and he, even it grew as big as it did but what i always liked about the queen mary is they always kept it so close-knit right you know out of out of what they would say they cast maybe 500 talent you know only like 10 8 10 12 of us are sliders right so i always thought that was something very special you know what i mean yeah yeah now, talk to me about those shipwrecked days, man. I don't think a lot of people uh, know about shipwrecked before Dark Harbor. I don't think there was a lot of, like, coverage on it. Uh, you know, it wasn't really mm -hmm. a time where, you know, we had the cameras and everything. You really got to see it if you only went to the event or if you read about it in papers and stuff. Talk to me about those shipwrecked days, man, because I know that that was the essential start of haunts being at uh, Queen Mary in the, in the 90s. That's when, the, when, it, when it started coming around. So talk to me about those days. How was it for you guys, and, and how was it different from what you saw at Knott's? Um, one for one would you, from what's different at Nazi would have to say the budgeting, right? The budgeting for sure. Queen Mary definitely did shipwreck didn't definitely didn't have the type of budget when it came to, uh, costume, makeup, maze props and, and whatnot, but they did what they could with what they had. You right. know what I mean? And that's one thing I think I'll always love about shipwreck. And one thing about that event was that was really carried by the monsters, by the talent. Right. You know, we had such a love for what we did and such a family atmosphere. You know, we treated it like a fraternity. Right. You know what I mean? So there was such a family atmosphere that we that's what made the event was the talent just putting it, giving it their all a thousand percent every night. We didn't care if we had all the money in the world or, or the most expensive mazes. You know, there was a lot of a lot of plywood with fluorescent paintings on there and stuff like that, you know, but like I said, we, we worked with what we had, you know, and, and like I said, when it came to the slider team, they're really the first ones that gave us our shot to like work the streets and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, there'll always be a soft spot there. You know? Man. And, and, and anybody who knows obviously dark Harbor, they know they're famous for the slider show. They know they're famous for, uh, the, the street talent being the way they are, the sliders and everything. Um, talk to me about, what that was like in those early days, like, you know, scaring the guests over in, in shipwreck compared to what you saw in Dark Harbor. I mean, obviously, you know, you're talking different crowds over the, the many different years coming up um, and everything. So what was it like seeing that evolutionary period of all these guests coming in and out? I mean, shipwreck at the time was a, a, a brand new thing. We didn't have very many haunts out here like we do today. You know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. to see something new like that, what was like a, a lot of those early guest reactions you remember of, of people coming in and you getting those scares? And shipwreck shipwreck started in 1995 right for those people who don't know uh, it goes back to 95 i started in 2001 
So at the time they were, you know, they were around six years. They had a little bit of a buzz, but you know, nothing like the bigger events like, you know, Knots and Six Flags and Universal. Right. Um, back then, I mean, it was always awesome just getting those scares, you know, because that's why we do it. One of the biggest things I remember that made us, I guess, a little different that I didn't find out till later is maybe because of our area and because of maybe the the price of tickets at the time and stuff like that, we had a lot rougher crowds. Wow. We had crowds that were really rough and we didn't always have the best security. You know, it wasn't until yeah. later after 2004 when I started working with some guys that used to work at Knott's and and there were nights where they would say yo it's it's not this bad at at haunt and say like, really and it's like no it's it's not like this so we kind of i think that's part of what made the slider team the slider team like so closely knit because right. we realized on the streets real early on that we had to work as a unit and we had to look out for each other because it it could get dangerous at, at times you know yeah so that was probably the biggest difference is the quality of the crowds yeah you know is what i would say and you see a lot of that today too especially with um and i see a lot of that at, at different events of like kind of the zones taking care of each other especially on those busy nights because it mm -hmm. does get it does get crazy and people do act stupid um but once alcohol is involved it's it's done it is yeah. done and dark harbor is no shy of that at that event so um but yeah i i think that um that's always what i've loved about going to events is seeing the the familyness within some of those groups that that kind of watch out for one another, and I think that's super important, especially with like you said, the crowds that you're dealing with, and all that, and and with you guys sliding and stuff, people try to fuck with you guys. Sometimes I see I see it all the time. Oh it's, yeah, it oh, is yeah. not fun. It's not fun for anyone. Um, those early slider shows, man. I mean, when did those like uh, when you when you when you started the event? Were those kind of was that already a thing established? The slider shows. No man. No, well, so the first year, 2001, we worked in the maze. Right. And then 2002 was when they kind of, they they redid the land at the Queen Mary. It's basically the basic layout of what you see today. Okay. Prior to that, it was, it was completely different. Like, there was a water fountain in the middle, and it was a whole different, there was, like, bricks and cobblestone. It was a whole different beast. Wow. Until what they had. So 2002, it was, like, fresh, fresh asphalt. So they were like, we're letting you guys outside to do your thing. So that was kind of beginning of the sliders working on the streets. Okay. So we'd always have little, I don't want to call them shows, but it's just, we'd end up grouping up and we'd start messing around. Right. You know, but then we always get in trouble. And then once <laughs> the team got a little bigger, like with Evil and Owls and Rash and those guys, once they came in, we'd do the same thing, start messing around. And again, we'd get in trouble, you know, secu <laughs> not security, but management would come in and say, oh, you guys can't be all in the same area, you know, because there was so little of us. So they would literally tell us disperse, disperse, <laughs> you know, so we would all separate and whatnot. But then it would, you know, on slower nights, we would all just end up in the same spot. And it's like, oh, hey, all the people are right here. And next thing you know, we're just kind of sessioning out. <laughs> You know, and then we'd have to kind of cut it before management came, you know, right. so that was like a shipwreck thing. And then Dark Harbor, when Dark Harbor started, there was no slider show and it was kind of the same thing. And then our buddy Heath, who was like the manager for the street team at that time, and he goes back to the slider days. Right. Right. And he's like a musician from from back in the day and stuff. So he kind of gets it, you know. Right. So he we were kind of wrapping up our thing one night and he ran up on us and he, hey, 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 hey. And we're like, yeah, we know. Disperse, disperse. And we start leaving. And he's like, no, no, come back. And we're like, well, what's up? And we're like, oh, great. Now we're really in trouble. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, hey, uh, hey, th this is awesome. And we're just like, oh, OK. And he's like, do you guys think you could do this every night? And we're like, every night? Like, yeah, we could do it every night. And he's like, yeah, just just like do it like like whenever. So it even still wasn't an official thing. But we were like allowed to do it. So whenever we just kind of all happened to be in the same area, it was like, hey, just we start sessioning out, you know? Right. And we didn't have like a limbo bar or nothing like that. We used to use rope. Oh, okay. You know, someone would bring a rope or we'd <laughs> get a rope. We'd find a rope from somewhere and we'd have two like street monsters hold it. Okay, and go move it down this way. And then, you know, we jump the rope and you got to make like, do with what you got, thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we exactly. We yeah. had to work what we got, and and because of our style of jumping, like we jump upright, and we don't you know, we don't jump with our team. We didn't jump with our hands, right. so it was like a big deal to jump like two people. So <laughs> it was like the big finale. It was like we're gonna jump two people, you know. And then 
the first year of Dark Harbor, there was this character called Boondara. The okay. old school Dark Harbor fans will remember Boondara. And um, I just recently found out it's not Slider Alley anymore, but where Slider Alley used to be, which is the walkway that runs parallel to the dome. Right. Right. There was like shipping containers on the side and Boondara. Every so often she would come out. She wasn't out there all night. Every so often she would come out and she was like a barker. You know, she'd come out and she'd have two of her little minions with her and they'd kind of do a little script. And then they would just bark at, at, at you know, heckle at right. guests walking by and whatnot. And so when she was out there, we weren't supposed to do our show. So I think it was like one of the last nights and we had just started, like we were just getting into it. And then boom, here she comes. And we're like, oh man. And then that was just like, we were, we were feeling it that night. And like I said, it was the end of the run. So we were like, it's not, not, we're going, just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> and so we just kept running it, you know? And then, so she goes up there and she does, starts her skit, but we're just still doing our thing right below her. So they kind of realized we weren't caring. And then they started getting into what we were doing. <laughs> and then so on the microphone, they start like commentating the show. Like it's a freaking you know? sports and show or something, right? Exactly. And they that's the way they were doing it, like the Olympics. Like, oh, the Spiders <laughs> are going to regroup and it looks like they're going to try a new formation. And um, hey, you know, last it was night, very, just go all out. Fuck it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it was very, exactly. It was very like Olympic style. But I think that's what kind of got the attention of like maybe the Dark Harbor higher ups because. Right. If I remember correctly, it was the year after that where it was like, no, your guys' show is going to be a thing. There's going to be lights. There's going to be music. Wow. You know, and it was like, okay, let's let's go. So we had to start coming in for practices and wow. rehearsing formations and every year trying to make it better and better and better. Yeah. You know, so it really started out as, as a renegade kind of thing. So it's cool to see what it became. Man, if you know? if, if there was, I, and I, there's, I, I would I would hope, would hope that there's footage out there of just those days of you guys just doing that just just, just messing around just there doing be. that you there know what i mean it's like hard enough i think that's YouTube's so a big place man it is man every every day uploading more and more you know and um i i think it's cool though that it started out as like a what i'm hearing what i what the best way i can compare this is you guys were essentially like Dogtown. you guys were just out there doing your Ripping thing loving it and doing exactly. what you guys no, didn't care what anyone said like you guys are just doing and then it and it spawned something and yeah it, and it and it like you said it progressed more and more every single year um so much so that it, it, it progressed even outside of the event uh to people that take it outside of the event as well but um it, it's just became this thing over there that that now especially this year all eyes are on dark harbor the big question for this year is, are they doing a slider show? And the, and the big hope is for everyone is yes, hopefully, because that's their thing. But that's how, that's how much this impacted the event now. They, they are known for this now. This is something that when you go to the event, this is something that you expect to see. Um, exactly. And, and so talk to me about that first, uh, that first year when you guys finally got, like, the production going. You guys finally got, like, uh, you got lighting, you got sound and everything. Like, how did that go from... We're just going to do our thing and improvise this and kind of know what we're going to do to we have a choreographed show now. Like we know exactly what we're doing. Obviously, there's some room for some improv if, if it's OK with everyone and everyone's safe and everything. But to actually have that stage show now to do that, how did that feel to like move up in that sense? Oh, I mean, it was awesome. I think a big part of it, too, that really helped was at the time, a lot of the sliders were, um, you know, pre and post season working on the production team right so you know because we we'd go in there and and set up and tear down and, right. and stuff like that so we our manager was the production manager that did all that stuff so she was kind of like well you guys need music i get you guys some music <laughs> oh you know and so you know so she was kind of the one in charge of all that stuff so i think that made it maybe a little easier than maybe usual um one of the big things i remember is we have to turn off the fog <laughs> because it was just like we couldn't see i remember there were a couple shows where we got mad because they didn't turn <laughs> off the fog but uh and the music it was you know kind of at to be honest with you it was improvised and and it was played off of a cell phone man there you go <laughs> you know what i mean we created we'd, we'd sit in the car in the parking lot before and we'd go through the the track list and had a little uh editing app and we'd cut everything up <laughs> and we'd create the list and Go airplane mode. Okay, here we go. Showtime. You know, 
Just That's hit this it. button right here when it's time. But it was all the music was all off of a cell phone. You know, luckily we were able to plug it into the audio system. So nobody knew the difference. You know what I mean? But right. that made it like official. That made it feel really like official and more similar to when I was younger, like how Ghost Town would have their little show prior to the hanging right. and stuff like this. But what made it cool is it was the Sliders show. Right. It wasn't like a pre-show to something else. Eventually, they named it Slider Alley. They put a banner right there, you know, and then they started asking us if we could do two, two shows a night. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. So in addition to all the scaring and stuff like that, it was Two like, shows. Hey, well, can you guys, can you guys add a second show at 11 o'clock? And it was like, well, we can't, you know, you're kind of asking us, but you're not really asking us. Yeah, no, you're kind of, really you're no. more or less telling us at that point. Yeah. We're like, doing a second show at 11 yeah. o'clock. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, that's what we started doing. We started doing two a nights, you know what I mean? And that's the way it was as long as I was there. And then, you know, sliders unite happened, you know, and that was groundbreaking in itself, you know, dude, I, I, I heard uh, I, I've talked to Scott a lot about Sliders Unite and stuff, and I've talked to so many people about that. Uh, talk to me about uh, your role in that and how, how cool that was to, to really bring and unite, you know, different people from from different parks all over all these sliders, all this talent all in one sh one show, one place. That must have been a blast to just kind of hang with the boys and, and just put on a, a freaking great performance. It was it was definitely very cool. And I think we knew at the time like hey this is this is the thing like this is going to be talked about this is historical yeah you know and um i i worked for 16 years um that was the last year that i worked the first year the the first sliders unite show and i'm honored to say that i was a part of it and that i was involved in it you know and it's one of the bigger i would say accomplishments of my career just being involved in that and making that happen from being like the first who they consider the first queen mary or shipwreck slider you know, to be involved in that show with guys from Ghost Town and, and Decade Brigade and Universal and all those other parks. Right. You know what I mean? We just, we broke ground. We broke ground. We only had like two days to practice that, if I remember correctly. Might have been one. And I, I, dude, in my head, it was like two weeks until <laughs> I talked to Dieterman recently. And he was like, dude, we didn't have no two weeks. It was like two days. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I guess it was like two days or a day. And I remember we were out there on Slider Alley, like during the week, and it was like pitch black. Like we didn't have no she, light. She couldn't we see anything. Yeah, we didn't have nothing. And it was just like, you know, run it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just start lining <laughs> stuff up. And, you know, it was kind of like the best of little pieces of the best of what everybody kind of had right you know what i mean and then it was like oh well we do this trick or oh, well, we do something similar that's like this okay what if we go out and you guys do that and then we do this this way you know and yeah. then here's the formation we do why don't we do this and then you guys get involved somehow you know so yeah it was a lot of fun having a lot of different sliders in there um being in there with with pyro with Dieterman. there's a section in that show where um we, there was a section we called the what was it called the wheelbarrow yeah we do the wheelbarrow section and squeaks picks up bricks and all the sliders are going underneath and they're turning and they're going all these different ways and then bricks lays down and this was a regular formation of ours and then i hit the i hit it and then i hit the jump and then right after me is is Dieterman. um i'll send you the video clip later oh you know yeah. What I mean? but yeah right after me is Dieterman. so it's like slider x and pyro so it's <laughs> like you know, and then we just talked about that spot recently. It's Man. very cool because it's kind of like the innovators of both styles of jumping. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. And like, like I said, I know Dieterman, um, I know he had um, his fun over at Knott's back in the day sliding and he, and he brought his things to the table. You took, you took it and brought your things to the table with the Queen Mary, man. Um, and I think if for anyone who wants to go see that, I know that one for sure is on YouTube. Uh, Cause that was oh, not, yeah. that was not that long ago. So that was, that one was, that one is on YouTube. Actually, when you think about it, it's almost 10 years. Holy shit. We're due it's for another one. Now, man. Yeah, I know we're eight getting close. Ago. We're getting close. We're due. Yeah. I think, I think on the 10th anniversary, we need to do a re, I mean, there's gotta be something. Let's make it happen. I guess that's two <laughs> years of prep time. Let's make it happen. Um, but uh, I think it's cool that, uh, you know, for anyone who hasn't seen that, go check that out. But it, it was such a cool experience, and especially for Haunt fans all around. Um, the diehards who go to all these events and who either know all these people, who know some of these people, who are like, hey, it's cool to see this person slide with that person. It was kind of like those 
like they say in wrestling, those fantasy matchups that like you want to see, but like you're like that can only probably happen in a video game or if you simulate it. But um, this was like a fantasy brought to life for a lot of Hom fans. So that was that's cool and that's really cool. You had a a huge part in that, and and that was kind of like. I would say that was kind of like your send off in a sense right there of like that was your last year, wasn't it? In a big way. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and to put all those years of, of of hard work and dedication, what do you like for you? What was your most like the most memorable time you had either shipwrecked or, or queen? Because for me, just hearing from your experiences, man. I would say those sesh, those like sliding sessions you had, man. Those seem like those just sliding with the boys and having a good time. Like that seemed like always a fun, a fun. That sounds like that's a fun thing. That's what it was, man. Yeah. That's what it was. Is is, um, and you know when you work there for so long, all the years kind of mesh together in your head. After a while, it's yeah. like, what year did that? Remember this thing? Yeah, I remember that. What year was that? You don't remember. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? And then especially because our team, our team was like everybody put in so many years. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, so it was like the same guys for a long time. You know what I mean? So Queen had a lot of loyal people. I will say that. There exactly. was a lot it of makes, loyal people. It makes it hard to decide for years. But, um, yeah, just hanging with the boys, man. Hanging yeah. with the boys were the best times. And then a lot of times what, you know, people I know now are, are really into their characters and stuff like that. And that's awesome. I think after working together so many years, all the boys, one thing we we started doing was just we were just trying to break each other. Yep. You know, we were just trying to trying to crack each other up. You know what I mean? So yep. that was some of the funnest stuff is just everybody out there goofing off and, you know, at the same time knowing that you had that that reliance, that group that you can rely on and fall back on at the same time. You know, but yeah, hanging yeah. with the boys, man, was was what made it everything, you know. That's, yeah, that's always that's always so fun with uh just to do that because you know hanging with the guys that's always just like it's what it's like it's especially in costume you guys are all getting you get paid to scare people and you're like hey we're all just here to have a good time where we're just we're chilling and like you said let's see if we can make each other break someone goes out there and does something hilarious and let's see if you guys exactly. can break right in the middle of the freaking alley in front of everyone exactly yeah that's awesome man and so now it's you know we're we're looking now we're looking forward to Dark Harbor, obviously, with Dark Harbor mm-hmm. coming up 2024. Um, a lot of excitement, a lot of things. What is something that uh, so far from what we've seen or anything like what is something that you're are you looking forward to Dark Harbor coming back? Are you excited for that next generation to come in and see what they have to bring to the table? I mean, now it looks like they're starting from the ground up almost again. Like, how do you feel about Dark Harbor coming back again? Um, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they can do um, because the thing about it too that i think a lot of people need to keep in mind when it comes to dark harbor is that it's a different production company yeah. involved this year so you know the way i would say it is it's it's dark harbor in name only mm-hmm. and you know i might be wrong they might prove me wrong i do see they're sticking with a lot of the original storylines and bringing back the original characters and stuff like that but it is somebody else's vision of what dark harbor is right you know what i mean so it is a different production team so we'll see what they do with it. I do know that there are some sliders that are involved in management and I, and whatnot. I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but, um, you know, so I'm sure there's going to be a slider team involved in some capacity, some way, shape or form. Right. You know? Um, so we'll see what they have to offer, you know, we'll see what they can do. And I'm looking forward to, to sitting back and watching it all, you know? Yeah, definitely, man. Now, uh, another person that I want to talk about with you was uh, squeaks. Uh, he was, um, he sadly passed away this year, but, uh, I, I never really get to know the person, uh, that, that is squeaks, but, uh, through everyone's stories that I've gotten to hear, um, it sounds like he was just an incredible person all around. Um, and he made a lot of people happy from, from the stories I was hearing and stuff. Um, talk to me a little bit about what that was like for you to get to, uh, to scare with squeaks all those years. And, uh, just that, that that kind of friendship you guys had probably going up to dark Harbor and all that, all those years and stuff. How was that for you, man? I mean, the crazy thing about squeaks is that I knew him. I knew him before he was like talent, like a monster. You know what I mean? I knew him since he was like 15 or 16 when he was still in high school, I was already working, you know, I was, I'm a few years older than he was. And, uh, you know, from just meeting him, it was like, bro, you got to be a monster because <laughs> he was just he was so tall. You know, he was right. already like a monster and he was already kind of like down with that kind of like stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like 
you know what I mean? He li- he listened to like metal. He was painting his fingernails black, and, <laughs> you know. So it was like, dude, be a monster, you know. And so he started working back in the shipwreck days, you know. And he worked a couple years in the maze, and then um, when they wanted us to expand the slider team in 2005, I believe it was, they asked us to expand the slider team. There was just four of us at the time. There was myself, Evil, Rash, and Howells. Okay. And then they again they they asked us to expand and we brought in Squeaks, uh, Ryan Parker, my buddy Pills was able to come back and um, Poofy, who was a like a veteran shipwreck street monster. Gotcha. So we you know doubled the size of the team. But Squeaks was like the first one of the first ones on the list mm-hmm. to get out there on the streets. Prior to that, he was sliding in the mazes and we'd go up there and check on him and he like worked this gnarly steel ramp. So we'd go hit that ramp with them and stuff. Um, but I mean, he was just, he was an all around fun loving guy, man. Um, I worked with them a lot too on what they call the strike team, which like I said, is part of the production team mm-hmm. when you're building and tearing down beginning and prior and after the end of the year. Um, you know what I mean? Great person to work with. Just, he was a funny guy. You know what I mean? He was always joking around, super sarcastic. You know what I mean? We were always cracking on each other. We were all like brothers. So we right. were always just kind of cracking on each other, you know, and, um, he was like he could say he was one of the faces of our team you know because everybody everybody knew squeaks mm-hmm. he was hard to miss you know everybody knew him and everybody loved him you know what i mean at the same time yeah so i'm i'm gonna miss him you know i'm i'm this close to tearing up right now talking about him dude I'm, um, I'm i'm i like i said i i i i didn't get to meet him but um every story i've heard it's made me want to tear up um, yeah, and and you know, he sounded like he was such a, a, a freaking awesome, awesome person. And uh, yeah, man, I, I I know that he had um had auditioned this year. Guy. I know he had auditioned this year for to come back, and I know he was looking forward to that. Um, and it's uh it's gonna be different without him. Um, yeah, because he was a big part of that event. So. Yeah, we um we recently met up at the Queen Mary, um. There's this spot that I don't want to tell everybody where it is, but there's this spot where we've been parking since like the beginning of time. And <laughs> we kind of like, and then they wouldn't allow you to go into work till like a certain time. So we'd all get there early. We'd all hang out in the parking lot and then we'd get out. We'd all be kind of wired. So we'd all kind of hang out for a little <laughs> bit. So we all met up at that spot and had like a little candlelight visual. Um, myself, Evil, some of the newer sliders were there. So I got to meet a lot of the newer sliders that I haven't met before. Right. You know, Dieterman was there. Um, a lot of the people that worked at the Queen Mary, just people that knew him, you know, were there. So it was kind of nice to get to hang out with everybody and see people I haven't seen in quite a while and meet some new faces and kind of see the direction the team's going in right now. Yeah. So, you know, I almost feel like maybe Squeaks is even part of the reason we're talking today. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. He got, he got me kind of you know, back in the font fold, I guess you could say, Man, you know, by, that's cool. on, by this all happening. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. we were saying, bro, you didn't, you know, you could have found another way to get us all together, you know, <laughs> uh, man, he, but, he, he, you know, you know it works. Yeah. The, the world, the, the, the universe works in very mysterious ways, man. It does. And, yeah. uh, yeah. Uh, it's going to be, like I said, it's definitely going to be a different, a different season without him. But I think that a lot of people are going to go in the headspace of, uh, making the most and making it the best of the season that they can for him. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. And I think that, uh, I, I think that it's going to be a fun season this year. I'm excited. Cause I'm always excited to see uh, new faces and new people that are coming in that are, that were fans and, and that they'll see what they can bring to the table. I, I've seen so many at knots. So I'm excited to see what, what queen Mary has to bring for dark Harbor. Um, Talk to me about the evolution of the slider team, man, because this thing right now is it's it's I think it's as big as it's ever been. Um, and it all started at this event. It all started with you guys back in the day. And that's mm-hmm. now it's evolved to even outside of the event and and to other um, like conventions and whatnot. Talk to me about the evolution of, of how that was for you and, and your part in all of that. Well, so I mean, I guess long story short, in the beginning, yeah, it was myself pills and jose we were the first ones to get hired at the queen mary sliders right um after 2004 my buddies couldn't work there anymore and coincidentally that happened to be the same year 
that three guys from Knox happened to come over, which was Evil, Howells, and Rash. And um, in the beginning, there was a little contention between us and them. You know, there was a big shipwreck versus Knox kind of rivalry back then and whatnot. But I was working the streets kind of by myself, and they put those guys in a maze and whatnot. And so it was finally like as it got busier, it was like, hey, get those guys out here, man. We need help. You know, we need yeah. guys out here. You know, we got we need guys that know what they're doing out here. Right. You know what I mean? So they brought them out. And and as time went on, working together, scaring together, backing each other up against crazy people, um, we started watching each other's backs and, and working together. And, you know, like I said, the rougher it got, we realized we had we really had to be a unit out there and we had to look after each other no matter what. You know, and then, in, like I said, I think it was 2005 is when because once we started working together, the shipwreck team was like, OK, we need more of that. Right. You know, so then they were like, expand the team. So that's when we brought in the other four. And that's when we were. Um, so I guess it really depends on on what faction you could consider the beginning of the slider team. If it was the three of us in 2001 or if it was that expansion in 2005 and at the end of that year to kind of commemorate that we were like a team now we got these jerseys nice like the letters are like falling off like, <laughs> they said, like it said shipwreck streets and then we Dude. all had like names and numbers on the back that's bad you know what i mean um yeah so that was like to commemorate that hey now we're like officially a team we're the shipwreck slider team right official you know what i mean and the it year after out. that yeah. is when we brought in bricks and we we ran like that until basically the end of shipwreck which anybody who really knows will tell you the last year of real shipwreck was 2008 okay and then in 2009 i guess for whatever reason the queen mary was like changing hands and so they decided to bring in a different production company to run shipwreck right so real similar to what's going on today right you had a, a different company taking over the shipwreck banner the problem was this company like they threw like like vip parties and stuff like that so they didn't understand the haunt life you know so it was like it was a year we kind of choose to forget 2009 <laughs> but in that year it's like it was we brought in newer guys right you know so it was like half of the old guys and then half newer guys that's when we started doing the back patches which have evolved into a whole different back patch today. Right. You know, and um, and then in 2010 is when it became Dark Harbor. And then so that's Man. when, you know, we became Queen Mary sliders because prior to that we were the shipwrecked sliders. Shipwrecked and then Queen Mary to kind of represent the event as both events as a whole kind of thing. Right. We yeah. felt that we were, we, yeah, we weren't just representing one event anymore. We yeah. were representing whatever was there we were representing the queen mary if you went to the yeah. queen mary you were going to see us regardless of you know what the event was called yeah and and so much so has gone on to uh expand that concept as to it just being a a, a session with the boys to now these guys are putting on shows like i said outside at other events like a, for example creeper real and stuff like that um i've seen them They're do organizing it. boot camps boot and camps stuff we and, just had two boot yeah. camps i've seen that yeah we uh, that was a lot of fun to go out there and see that they're you know they're getting back out there uh getting their social media presence back out there and stuff so it's really cool to see how how far it's evolved from just a small group of sliders that would just wanted to go out there and be renegades to where it's at today you know what i mean like like i said Dogtown. that's the exactly. best way exactly the best way. i'm glad it's still going on yeah you know, i'm glad there's still people working and representing you know what i mean so oh, it's man. like okay cool you know because that could have died off you yeah. know it could have became some whole other thing yeah. you know yeah indeed uh i i i i'm so stoked to to hear that um you know, that this concept grew, kept growing more and more and people were actually behind it and stuff. Because I know, like you said, sliding was a huge thing over at Knott's and a lot of people saw it before that pre-show. You guys were the first ones to make it the main event and be the show, you know. So I think that's really cool to see that that fan base has still stayed loyal and still stayed committed mm -hmm. all these years because I still see a lot of love for this event. Even when this event was gone for all the years it was gone there were still people buzzing and talking about it and, and still keeping it alive and teams like, you know, QM sliders today, uh, still trying to keep that, that name and that event alive. And, um, I think it's really cool to see how much of that, just that concept of something small 
has grown to what it is today. And now we're getting the return of Dark Harbor. Uh, 13th Floor is doing their version of it, their idea, like you said, their vision of it. But um, I, 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 for for what I could see right now, I'm 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 looking. I'm using the word reboot. <laughs> That's what I'm using right now. Yeah. That's yeah. essentially what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I could I could use a reboot. Um, but talk to me about now your uh, your current endeavors. Now you you've kind of you hung it up with the the world of scaring now, um, but you're still kind of you're still linger you're still here you're still doing other things now. What is your new your current adventures right now? Uh, right now, what I do currently is uh, where I'm at right now is I run a karate dojo. I run a full time dojo called Combat Karate in Long Beach. Um, for anyone who's interested, um, you know, past, present, future, we're um, building champions. You know, that's what we do. We uh, we build tomorrow's youth and and today's generation, you know, to learn how to defend themselves and become good citizens of society and decent overall people. You know, I've been involved in martial arts my whole life and I've always been teaching martial arts. So once I kind of hung up the pads, I felt it was time to just dive head first, you know, and just 100 percent completely into this endeavor. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. But recently, there's been some talks with uh, some people and stuff like that. Myself and the Almighty Bricks have been talking for people that know that name. They're fans of the team from a few years ago. Um, We're talking about bringing back Slider Nation in um, some capacity or another. Um, For people who don't know what Slider Nation was, was Slider Nation was supposed to be a clothing brand for all sliders everywhere. A lot of people get the miscommunication that it was like a slider team. Okay. It, it wasn't. It was supposed to be like a brand for everybody, you know, by sliders, for sliders, so to speak. So we're looking at bringing that back in some capacity. Sliding's kind of bigger than ever right now. Yeah. So, you know, we thought maybe it's time to, to bring that back. And we're also, you know, maybe looking at, you know, dusting the pads off and doing a couple things ourselves. Ooh. You know, I don't know if we're looking at going and working or anything like that, but you know, there might be some things in the works. So, and so, you, so, so you Slider say Nation, there, you know? there is, there is a possibility that Slider X himself puts on a pair of pads again. Oh, there is, there, there is, is a possibility. Yeah, there, there, is. there is a possibility. I always say in the world of haunt, never say never until you know it, there, something can always happen. At a well, left I always out. say, I always say, uh, Batman don't get rid of the suit. Nope. Never, <laughs> nope, <So. laughs> ever, ever. Um, I think it, it's been uh, it's been an absolute honor to get to talk to you today. Um, I'm very happy that we, we we got the an opportunity to sit down and you got to tell the story of 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 your time over there and, and how that kind of really evolved to this bigger idea of what we see today. Um, so yeah, man, thank you so much for all the all the things you've done in the haunt scene um, and, and everything that uh, hopefully we get to see in the future with the return of Slider Nation and other stuff that you have planned, as well as uh, keeping up with uh, the, the dojo. I think that's awesome, kind of teaching the youth of today to defend themselves in a uh, respectful and respectful way and use, use this for uh, more or less defense rather than violence, so... Correct. Um, I, I think that's a, an, a great, amazing message that you do there. And I respect anyone. I, I'm a fan of Cobra Kai and the karate kid. So like, I respect anyone who does that. Cause I'm just like, as most people are probably who are getting yeah, into it now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's just that fine line of respect there. So, uh, mm-hmm. no man, I appreciate the time and I appreciate you contacting me. And, and I know you and I talked about another podcast idea. I won't say it right now because I feel like you and I can maybe set something up in the future for that. Um, but Stay tuned because we might have a fun one for you guys, and uh, you, you're not going to want to miss it. And I, I can promise you right now, I'm probably not going to say a lot in that podcast because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have a lot to say, and I'm just going to let the mic, let them have the mic. I'm just here to listen. That's what it's going to be if we can get there. So, um, again, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the time, and uh, and I, and I, and I can't wait to see what happens next with you, man. Um, a lot of thank great you. things, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate the talk. Anytime, my brother. Yeah, man. Uh, go check out, what is it, Combat Karate? Yes, sir, with the K. With the K. So check out Combat Karate on Instagram. And uh, check out uh, if you want to get into some karate, man. I highly suggest it. I highly suggest it. Uh, with nothing else more. Yeah, hey, you got to stay You gotta stay safe during the hot season, man. For real. Exactly. I mean, stay safe during the hot season. Get a, let's get a bunch of characters in there. Let's teach them some self-defense in case they need to use it. Not saying they're going to use it, but I'm just saying it's always good to have it in your 
in your arsenal. Just saying. I'm the guy. So He's the guy. <laughs> he knows more than anyone. He's the guy. <laughs> But if nothing else more, we appreciate everyone that that tuned in today. uh, And we will see you guys next week for another episode. And uh, follow us on all of our socials. And stay spooky.